On FWBO Day this year, Subuti launched Bhante's long-awaited translation of the Dharmapada. Bhante has spoken of himself as a translator, but he's uh, used that in a metaphorical sense. He's talked of himself as an elucidator of the Dharma, bringing the Dharma from the dark into the light. And in that sense, he's seen himself as a translator. But in this case, he's literally a translator. And uh, he's devoted himself over many years to the translation of this very, very important text. But this translation has special merits. First of all, of course, from our point of view, it's by our own teacher. And there's a sense in which we're being personally addressed uh, by the translation. After all, his, uh, his translation comes out not just of his knowledge of Pali, his understanding of, of the Dhamma, but his knowledge of individuals, of the people he's addressing. And those people are, in the first place, ourselves. So the translation is, in many ways, addressed to us individually and personally. But uh, it's also significant, this translation, because the Dhammapada has been especially important to Bhante for many years. Many years ago, when he was wandering in India, he learnt it by heart in Pali. And at that stage, he didn't understand Pali. He had an English translation, but uh, he couldn't work out the literal meaning of the Pali, but he felt so strongly moved by the, uh, by the text that he learnt it by heart. And uh, he does know it very, very well indeed. He studied and reflected on it again and again and again. And he's taught from the Dhammapada uh, in India and here in Britain. So he has great feeling and understanding. And uh, what we've got here is a translation not by a competent philologist, uh, although he is a competent philologist, not merely by a competent philo philologist, but by somebody who really cares about the text and feels very strongly for it. One might wonder why there should be another translation of the Dhammapada when already there are so many. But one could say that one can't have too many translations of the Dhammapada. It's a very important text and uh, different translations bring out different shades of meaning. In my own particular translation, I've tried in particular to bring out what I, what I feel as the uh, sense of urgency uh, of the Buddha's words in the, in the Dhammapada, which I think, as far as I'm aware, no other you know, translator has tried to do. Experiences are preceded by mind, led by mind, and produced by mind. If one speaks or acts with an impure mind, suffering follows him, even as the cartwheel follows the hoof of the ox drawing the cart. The Dhammapada is important to me um, because it is a very early text and it gives us quite a taste of what must have been the, the Buddha's personal teaching. It's very succinct. Every verse goes very much to the point. And I think no Buddhist can, can afford to ignore the Dhammapada. Experiences are preceded by mind, led by mind, and produced by mind. If one speaks or acts with a pure mind, Happiness follows him like his shadow. During my early years in England, before I went to India, as far as I remember, I did not come across the Dhammapada. Certainly, I have no recollection of reading it at that time. And as far as I remember, my first contact with the Dhammapada was uh, shortly after my arrival in Delhi in 1944, eh, while I was still in the army. I happened to go along to a Buddhist temple. I think it was the only Buddhist temple in Delhi. 
And inside, just inside the temple, I, I found a bookshop. And uh, there on the bookshop, uh, or on the bookstall, it wasn't really a shop, there was uh, a copy of the, the Dhammapada, a little pocket edition uh, translated with the Devganagari text by Dr. N. K. Bhagavat, whom years later I got to know. So I bought it, and for years and years I carried it around with me all over India, until such time as I eventually settled in, in Kaling Prong in 1960, no, 1950. <laughs> Working on the, the translation, especially the year before last, when I spent a whole month working on it, completing it, uh, when I was at Guhyaloka, meant quite a great deal to me because uh, it meant for one whole month I was completely immersed, as it were, in the world of the Dhammapada. I wasn't doing anything else, and I wasn't thinking about anything else, or very little, very occasionally. And as I say, living in that, that world of the, the Dhammapada, you know, living in uh, the world of the Buddha's teaching as contained in the Dhammapada, I mean, concentrating on every single verse, going over the translations again and again. So that was quite an important uh, period for me. Not by hatred. Are hatreds ever pacified here in the world? They are pacified by love. This is the eternal law.